Hello and welcome along to episode 3 of our second stint of rebuilding Scandinavia from Viborg with me Daniel. We're back today slightly earlier than planned at the end of September and it's with good reason too. We have drawn top tier opposition in the third round of the cup. It's Jack Wilshere and the boys. It's Ola Toivonen who we faced in Sweden. Although the latter is ruled out with injury today, it's a strong AGF side that we face in the third round of the Danish Cup. So if you're looking forward to that, as well as a budding title race in Denmark, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. It's been a massive week for the channel outside of this series as well because we've had the return of our niche experiments for FM22. One of my favourite top threes was out last Sunday. You can find those in the eye above as well as the last couple of episodes of the Hemel Save which are just absolutely nuts. So thank you very much for your support as always. All the key links up there or down in the description below. You can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button too. But let's get cracking with Viborg because... It's not just about playing top tier opposition. It's not just about a very good title race between three sides at the top. We have got a bit of transfer news and we've been trying to plan ahead for January. We know that there's big players on the way out. We know we're going to have to make small deals because financially we can't compete. And I'm pretty pleased with what we've managed to do. Now we almost had an Englishman come and join us at centre half because the first player we tried to sign, if you excuse the keyboard, was this man. Harley Dean. A lot of people, Brentford and Birmingham fans in particular, will recognise him. He's gone to Notts County instead because they could offer more than twice the wage, which fair play to him to not have to move country and to get double the money. I don't blame him at all. But he was the first one we looked at. The second one the director of football brought up for us was the guy we eventually signed. So if we go to the transfer history, our long-term replacement for Karamoko is Dominic Frank. He joins on a free agent deal. He's a natural left back and centre half with two and a half star ability and three star potential. I really like the way he plays. He gives us natural balance. He's got quality and he's not on a big wage. We've got to think about reducing the wage bill overall. And even if we do get promoted for next season, to have squad players in on under a grand a week could be massive. He's played for Ingolstadt. He's got senior football under his belt and lots of B team football for big sides, including Leipzig and Wolfsburg. He's just a really solid pro and I think with football he will develop and he gives us a stronger backup at left back and a strong backup for now at centre half with the ability to take over. So really pleased with that signing. We know that when we get to January we're probably going to have to sell another big gun. Hopefully we can get them back on loan as we have with Saeed and with Londvik. But let's have a look at what's been happening on the pitch because I feel like we're just starting to find some form now. We're able to rotate. We're playing some of the poorer sides in the league. The last three games, to be honest, they shouldn't have been a challenge and they haven't been. We played away at another amateur side in the second round of the cup. We won by six goals to nil with a rotated team. Young Copenhagen Loney, David Palmer got a couple in that one. Unfortunately, he's out injured today. We also saw one apiece for Frederick Christensen, another youngster, Lonvik Harbo and Yanusa as we won really comfortably away from home. Back-to-back -back home wins followed against Jamabug. That was a 3-0 win with Rothman, Said and Lonvik getting the goals. And then a 4-0 win at home at the weekend as we just rotated two or three players. A red card for the very experienced Michael Lum helped us out. As well as a penalty from Tobias Carlson, a goal for Joe Jim Rothman and two for star man Justin Lonvik. So we're pretty well rested for this one. We were able to take three or four off at the hour mark there. As soon as that third goal went in, we made big, big changes. So now we've got four days between these two fixtures. A home to Hobro who are struggling in the bottom half. I feel we can rest four or five and get away with a victory. But then three successive away games, including Lingby right behind us. And Vensil, who obviously we rejected, but gave us a pretty good game on the opening day. So that's going to be a real test for us. But it's all about AGF. We've got good dynamics. We're doing really well on and off the pitch. We've built a really cracking squad given the budget we've had and what we've had to sell to achieve it. So will it be worthwhile? These are the sorts of sides we want to be competing with next year. Mid-table sides in the top tier. Jack Wilshire still there starring three years in. Not left straight away as he did in real life. Really good player. Lost his physicality completely. 
but technically and mentally, we know exactly what he's capable of. Of course, they're missing Ola Toivonen today, who is unfortunately out injured, but there are other big names in there as well. English fans will probably recognise Thomas Callas, former Chelsea youngster who played for Bristol City for a few years. Really good centre-half, much better than the standard we've got. And this is what we're talking about in terms of just being that next step up. Whether they rest a few for the cup today, they've got a few first-teamers suspended, it might help us. But I reckon at home, with a crowd in, and with a fully fresh squad, we might be able to compete against their rotated side. For next season though, looking at an 8th place side in that division, we want to be competing at that level. We want to get promoted and be in and around that region next year. So let's see how we get on as we go in and pick the team. A few changes from the weekend game no doubt, and maybe a debutant in defence. Let's go and see. As I mentioned, unfortunately Palmer, the right winger, is out injured, but Saeed comes back in having been on the bench of the weekend. We've also got returns for the likes of Grernin, for Bonda, Karamoko from injury, none of them started at the weekend, and Yembi and Laridson got half an hour's rest towards the end, as did Londvik. So, we're pretty comfortable at the moment with the conditioning. It's just whether Karamoko makes it through, because if not... We've then got a choice between Frank making his debut or a slightly tired Mikel after international duty. But our 11 in four to start the game is strong enough to compete with virtually anyone. As it's Behrens in goal, been a rock solid signing since he's come in. And Yemi and Laridson, the fullbacks, with Karamoko returning alongside Carlson at centre half. Grönin, Londvik, and Bonda at the midfield three. Saeed, Beck, and Rothman, the front three. Strength in depth is starting to appear too. We've got the likes of Yanusa, Mikel, Frank Harbo, all really solid outfield players off the bench. But defensively, we're still a little bit light. So we'll be hoping we can avoid injuries. And fingers crossed, a cup shock on the way. Because boy, do we need the money. So we've mentioned the four changes for us and some of the stars for AGF. Callas and Wilshire both start. Gif Links pointed out as a key man. He's electric quick out wide. Couple of first teamers rested for them, but largely it's first choice. So going to be a difficult test. They're probably about half a star better in virtually every position. So they're not a huge step up. They aren't, of course, one of the top sides in Denmark, but they're a very solid team. And this is where we're going to get a test of just how good we can be and how far momentum can take us. As early doors, we're coming down the right-hand side with Saeed. We're still in our balance mentality, which in the league has often transgressed into a positive one. It's pushed itself forward as the games have gone on. But during this one, I think we're going to stick back a bit and try and hit them on the counter. They're going to have a high line. And that is just about the dream start for us. How on earth we've scored from there, I don't know. It was a poor through ball on the left from Laridson. Callas intercepts, but it actually goes all the way through. And Saeed's just got a tap in at the back post. So, great assist from Thomas Callas for us. Doing a favour to another man who's more familiar with the English game. As Wilshire set piece delivery, very good straight after. But the header goes over the bar. As of just over 10 minutes on the clock, it's been a massive game so far. Loads of highlights, loads of chances. But we're watching them play out from the back again as Rinna goes long downfield. Karamoko back to fitness and does well there. Just calms it back down to the goalkeeper and Gronin plays to Karamoko again. Bonda finds Londvik up towards Rothman. He's doing really well but won't sign a new deal yet. One of the few we haven't got tied down for two years from this first team. As down the left come AGF to Wilshire. Lovely turn, back out wide. Looks after the ball so well. Into Gift Links who's brought down from Laridson. The key man, he's just got that bit of quick movement and we were unable to deal with it. Penalty kick, who takes? It's right footed, it's into the corner. The keeper could do nothing about it. 1-1, one, one, they're back on terms. It's been a very exciting game and a pretty even one, so the score's probably fair. As we're straight off from the kickoff with Gronin to Carlson. Finds Karamoko alongside him and Laridson. Down the left he goes. It looks like it's going to be end to end. As Beck finds Laridson again and Rothman out to Beck on the left-hand side. Gets through, finds Saeed at the back post. Shot goes just wide. Really struggling the left-back to deal with Saeed. Maybe that's why he's got himself a big move. As we've got Laridson with the corner. In-swinger to the back post. Karamoko down for Saeed. He's there again. Two tap-ins. Two absolutely awful goals. A combined distance of about three yards. But it's two goals and that's what it counts as. A massive moment and being in the right place at the right time counts. As Karamoko mopping up at the back for the unteenth time. Still only 18 minutes gone in this thrilling cup tie. And it's a long ball down the left to Beck. Inside to Gronin. 
Force backwards to his centre half. And Larrison on the left. But he's not going to be able to go forward there, is he? Does really well to find Beck, actually. Back to Gronin. Into Karamoko. You can see the well-rested players getting in control of the ball in midfield as Behrens puts a long one downfield. Headed away easily, but only as far as Rothman. Beck brings it down on the left. Rothman again. Saeed in. He's on a hat trick. Oh my word, he's blazed it over. Probably the easiest chance of the lot. And he somehow managed to spoon it 50 yards over the bar. But it's 2-1 and we're getting on top here as Gromback goes left. AGF looking to counter us. Down the left-hand side to Haraldson. Inside to Jack Wilshire. Goes all the way back to the keeper for some reason. But he'll start again. Plays out to Wilshire. Two players closing him down very quickly. Getting the press on. Stopping him from dictating the game. And more importantly, turning on the ball and looking forward. But they do work down the left eventually. Two inside. One of them's Gromback. Out wide to the left back who's overlapping again. Into the centre forward. It hits the post. And it stays 2-1. I don't even want to predict the score in this one. Both teams expected goals over one. It's 2-1 to us, but this could go absolutely either way. AGF getting on top. They're now dominating the stats. The problem is they've not had good enough chances for us to see. And at half time, we just cling on to our advantage. Two goals to one. We prove a point, but this is going to be big. We need the home crowd to get behind us. It's a bigger one than we get in the league, but still not a massive one. As Rothman picks it up. Five minutes gone in the second half. Bonda finds Gronin and Londvik up towards Beck to Rothman. Lovely football. Good save by the keeper. Too hot to handle first time, but he smothers it at a second attempt. Really good goalkeeping and lovely football in the build-up. So it's a long ball forward from our visitors. Headed away by Larriton to Beck. Over to Rothman. He's in one-on-one. -on -one. No mistake from Joachim Rothman. I said he would be a brilliant sign-in. And my word is he delivering on that. Nine goals already. He's a superstar. And we've got a two goal advantage, probably against the runner plate from the last half an hour. But here come the visitors on the way back. Callas with a throw in our half. Down the right to Harrelton who switched sides. Gromback puts in Links the danger man. Crosses from the right, it's into the front post. And headed in for 3-2. What a game of football this is. Not enjoyable from a defensive point of view. From us trying to hang on to a lead. But it is a fabulous game for the watching neutral. And certainly for the fans in the stadium. 20 minutes remaining. Wilshire's knackered for them. We have got the physical advantage. But who do we bring on? I'm going to take off an exhausted Tobias Beck on the left hand side. I'm going to push Larridson forward and bring on Frank at left back. Just go a little bit more solid with a winger in front of a fullback. We're then going to take off Bonda who's had an average game for Yanusa. I'm going to take off Carlson who's knackered for Mikel. And then probably Harbo will come on a bit later on, but I don't want to make too many changes at once. Or in fact, I think we might only get three changes. Yeah, three changes for the cup, five for the league. It's very weird. Behrens with a long ball downfield towards Rothman. Good flick, but only finds Callas. And now it's a battle of the substitutes. Which ones are stronger? Links down the right hand side. He's still got bundles of energy. Finds Gromback. Back to Callas. Down the line to Links. Two or three in the middle. You can see they're piling them forward. But our tactic's fairly cautious. If they can't defend it, then so be it. Are we going to get extra time? It's a long ball forward. Good header down from Frank. Lovely first contribution from him to Mikel. And Londvik. Wide to Saeed. Long ball forward to Rothman. He's got him behind again. Jochen Rothman forces a great save from Rinner. Absolutely wonderful football. This is a stunning game. Honestly, absolutely brilliant. It's a joy to watch. Larrington's corner to the back post headed away. And now Lynx can counter. If he turns this man, we're in trouble. Down the right he goes. Brilliant from Gronin. Manages to hold the ball up. As Anyembi throws in from the right. No rest up here. No chance to catch your breath. Is it's now us on the front foot. Saeed's ball is blocked. It's away down the left come AGF. A big counter attack now. It's end to end. You couldn't ask for more. This is like the FA Cup on steroids. It's mad. Ball into the box is poor and Behrens will claim it. Now can we counter attack? Can we get on the front foot and finally put this game to bed? No, it's a poor kick. It's headed away. Duncan picks it up in the centre circle. Big switch to Lynx. What's the keeper doing? Oh, he's got there and then played a silly ball. Karamoko deals with it well. Behrens clearance is poor. Karamoko wins another header. This is chaos. It's absolute carnage. I have no idea what's going to happen next. As Link's ball in is headed just wide. I've got a feeling we've got away with one there. 10 to go. It's 3-2. It's absolutely crazy. 
With five left, I'm going to go a little more cautious. I'm going to drop the wingers into wide midfield positions. Just try and get a bit more of a structured shape. We'll drop Grun into a deep line playmaker. Yanusa to a centre midfielder on defend. The fullbacks will go on to defensive duties too. And we're going to waste time and slow the pace down. I've not had to do that yet at Viborg. But it's going to be happening today. Five minutes plus stoppage time to go. It'd be a massive win in the cup. A big statement for our future. But it's a really close one. And I wouldn't say it's over yet. As we're into five minutes of stoppage time. Nearly two of them played. And the long ball forward from Behrens is headed clear. Lynx picks it up to Grumbach. To Park Yi Young. The substitute down the right into the box. And Behrens has let one slip under him. 3-3 three, three in the third minute of stoppage time. They deserve it. It's been a really even game. But we're going to extra time. And as the lower league side, I'm not sure we've got the advantage now. Looks like this episode is going to become a one game one. It's been action packed this. But we're going to ask the lads to prove a point. We'll go back to our normal tactic. I presume we're going to get another sub now. If I take Londvik off for Harbo, we can do that. Do we get any more than that or are we limited to four? We're limited to four. So into extra time. It's going to be problems for the weekend because a few of them aren't going to be able to play. But into extra time we go. 3-3 against top tier AGF. Who knows what's going to happen next. Well I should have predicted really. Extra time is normally very boring. But not today. And who cares if the rest of it is. Because Larison stays on the pitch out of position. Puts in a wonderful whip delivery with his left foot. It was an in swinging towards the goal. No one knew what to do. It was in that dangerous corridor. And Harbo the sub. Fresh legs. Gets the run on his defender. And scores another crucial goal for this football club. He's popped up with so many already. The Copenhagen Lone Stars are doing the job. But in go AGF. They should have scored. First half stoppage time in extra time. One on one puts it wide at a post. Both teams expected goals are two point something. 19 shots to 18 in AGF's favour. 12 to 10 on target in our favour. The possession is one off 50-50. The corners 9 to 5. The fouls. AGF definitely winning that one. Four yellow cards to our zero. But an absolutely crazy game. A brilliant match to watch. And we've got 15 minutes to try and cling on. I'm not going to go time wasting this time because we saw what happened in normal time. But can we put it to bed with a corner? Larritsen into Mikel. First goal of the season. He's going to be off soon if he won't sign reduced terms. But he might have just scored a big cup goal. 5-3. The prize money is getting closer. Surely we can't blow the two goal lead this time. What an effort. What a performance. Are we ready for the top tier on this? I don't know. We're certainly going to make it exciting as Anyembi finds Gronin on the right. Time in possession. I mean, in four days' time, none of these are going to be able to play. It's a big problem for us. But for now, we're going to soak in the moment. Though Gronbach's on the counter. They get one back here. It could be a grandstand finish. We've seen plenty of attacking intent from them. Gets all the way to the byline, into the front post. It's 5-4. Four. four minutes plus stoppage time to go. And AGF are back within one. Please don't do it again. One minute added on. Don't you dare. The full time whistle goes. It is 5-4 to Viborg. It is one of the best games I've seen in FM22. Attacks for either side. End to end. Attacking intent from the AI. And we just about sneak through it. And I think it was fitness that probably won the day. It could have gone either way. We probably didn't deserve to win. But what an effort. We're through to the next round. And after that one, I'm going to need a lie down. First though, let's see when we're going to be back and whether the cup draw is before the next game. Well, I think the media might have undersold this one a bit. Describing it as a thrilling encounter is an understatement. The stadium was half full for the first time this season. Nearly 5,000 get through the gate. Through in the third round, Franca made a debut. What a game to do it in. And Saeed, showing why he got that big move. Absolutely beautiful performance. We'll get through the post-match press conference in a minute. I want to know when the draw for the next round is. Is there any announcement on there? There's not. So bear with me while I go and find out. Right, the draw is this Friday apparently before our next game. So let's skip ahead, see if we get another big boy and then we'll decide when we're going to come back. Hopefully it will be for another big cup game like that. Here it is then, we've got the likes of Copenhagen and Bromby that we could come up against, but also Fremad Amager, don't forget a side that rejected us after interview about half a year ago. 
So let's see who we come up against. Mitchell and in there as well. AAB are behind my head. All the big boys are there. But there's some lower league teams too. So let's see if we get lucky. We're going to draw through all the teams. We are the first team out. And we're at home to Randers. A top tier side that didn't even consider us for interview. And they are really struggling this season. Nine points from nine games. No draws. So it looks like it's going to be chaos again. What are the goals for and against like? Not too far off AGF. So it could be another exciting one. We have a look at the squad. Have they got any stars? I don't think I recognise any of those names. But looks to be a much younger squad. And they've got one hell of a youngster there. 16 year old Lars Blom. He is a youth academy player who is going to be one of the futures of Danish football. What a footballer he is. What a shame we can't afford someone like that. But that, I'm sure, will form part of the next episode. It comes in the middle of next month as we play some of the top sides in the league or the bigger reputation ones. If you're looking forward to finding out how we get on, whether we can cause another cup shock and whether we can stay top in this very close title race, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. As I mentioned earlier, it's been a massive week or so for the channel. The Experiment series returns for FM22. The new top three is an absolute cracker. And the last couple of episodes of the Hemel Save have all been carnage. You can find those up in the eye above. All the key links and playlists there with others down in the description below. I'll put the top three playlist above my head now if you haven't seen the latest one yet. But thank you for watching as always. Your incredible support is appreciated. And I'll see you again here in a couple of days time for top tier opposition in the cup again.